I can guarantee you, I will bring you some value in the exact deal that you're working in. If you're selling a cup, a paper, a phone, a mic, real estate, a boat, mortgage or insurance. Because for me, it's all the same. I'd be an idiot after 25 years in sales and service if I didn't pick up on some patterns. So I want you to come join me live every Wednesday on YouTube at noon Eastern, where I take your questions live on how to be a better salesperson, how to sell more, how to lead a team every single Wednesday, noon Eastern on YouTube. As it can get overwhelming, just, just pick one thing, move the needle slightly in the right direction. And what will start to happen is that you'll, you'll, you'll start to get the confidence that you, you took an idea and executed on it. Mm -hmm. And then you take on something else. Like you don't have to try to do everything. Now I have a big team, but I started off with nobody. I did this by myself. I always did some sort of brainstorming like this. Did I come up with 85 ideas by on my own when I started uh, 15 years in real estate and 26 years in sales? No, but I had maybe four, but I maybe didn't even get to all four. I got to one and I, and I built on that. I built on top of that. And so really the compounding effect, great book by uh, Darren Hardy. If you guys haven't read it um, or listened to the audiobook, um, it just talks about doing one thing, doing it to the best of your capability, then picking up on, 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 on a new task or a new habit. Majority of the results that I'm trying to accomplish take time. They take time, right? Mm -hmm. And so, look, we had to significantly pivot as of March 15th, 2020, when this lockdown happened. I had to get the data. So, like you have to get the data and then trust your gut with the decision you make. I personally don't spend too much time on making decisions. I make them really fast mm -hmm. and then I just deal with the consequences, man. And I got to, like I said, I, I talk about the crew around me a lot. It's important. I think you need to surround yourself with people that fill your gaps in your business, in your personal life, whatever it is. Roll with the punches. It is what it is. And we keep moving the needle come in from linkedin dm okay and this person asked uh being a self-employed salesperson how important is a saving strategy can you break down your personal saving strategy yeah so ever since uh, look i was in car sales before i got into real estate and um what i what i used to do back in car sales is actually save 50 percent of my income now i was living with my parents at that time so it was very easy for me to do that mm -hmm. but what it allowed me to do is when i got into real estate like when you're in full commission sales, you got to be prepared. In my opinion, you should have a minimum of six months of carrying costs before you get into a business, before you get into uh, uh, sales, like full commission. Why? Because there's going to be months where you don't get paid. And so for me now, I'm probably, I hover around anywhere from 15 to 17%. I know it's an odd number, but I, I, I save, I pay myself first. Look, everyone's going to get their money. They're all going to ask you for their money. CRA, the mortgage, the lender, um, uh, uh, the phone bill, the internet bill, the utility companies. If you don't get into the habit of saving yourself, uh, uh, saving right off the top, I can tell you, you're going to run into a lot of problems. And so I need you to develop, write down, think about, take the time and have a much bigger goal now. Because I have a feeling as you were knocking on doors when you got started, it was like, wow, if I can knock on 50 doors today and get five people to buy into whatever you were selling, that was like amazing for you. And then you got good at it and then you got probably great at it. And now you've mastered it, I'm sure, from from your comment. Now you need to set a bigger goal. I'll explain what I mean. I wanted to start. So 15 years ago, I wanted to do a deal. I want to sell one home a month. OK, it probably took me about a year and a half, uh, let's say two years to get to a point where I consistently was doing a house a month. So that's 12 houses a year. Then. Once I hit that, I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Like this, this is kind of cool. I set a, I set a, a, a target. I make sure that I monitor it. I'm doing all the activities. And at any time ask about all the activities, I want you guys to get into the micro of sales, like not just high level mindset stuff, 
I'm all about that and I'll answer all your questions about that, but also ask me about micro. Like you might be have a client right now and you're selling boats right now and you have a, a concern or you're not able to navigate this, th th this specific deal you're working on. I want you to bring it to me because I truly believe I'm at a stage now where see the product or the service, i.e. if it's a boat, uh, a phone, a mic, a cup, an elastic band, it's all the same. It could be a $20 million piece of land or a $3 mask. It all comes down to influencing, watching patterns, and making it as easy as you possibly can to buy. If you tell me how I'm going to be able to use your service in one sentence or two sentences, you're going to catch, and, and how I'm going to either make money or save money. Because at the end of the day, as a business owner, what I'm looking to do is make more money or save money. Okay. And so if you can show me how your service or product, and in this situation, it's a service, how your service is going to be able to help me make money or, or, or help me save money, then I'm you, you got my ears. Now, is that going to work with everyone? No. At the end of the day, you're, it's a numbers game. Okay. I understand what you're doing in terms of in terms of like DMing people on Instagram or private messaging them. I myself don't go down that route. I'm trying to build relationships. Now, the cool thing with LinkedIn is, is that you can actually search the company's uh, uh, employees. Who's the decision maker? So I would want you to know in, in, in each of these companies that you're going, uh, going to, who do you think the decision maker is going to be? Why not search them? and find out a little bit more information about them before you private message them, i.e. go see if they have an Instagram account, a Twitter account. I mean, like today, I've been talking a lot about Clubhouse for the last couple of weeks because it's it's blowing up, which is the iPhone only app. Are they on Clubhouse? Connect with them on a different level, not with your product or service. Try to build rapport with them. The best way to build rapport with somebody is to talk about something that they're interested in. Is it possible to scale too quickly? When do you know it's the right time to scale your company? And what was the biggest mistake you made while scaling your company? Yeah, look, I mean, is it is it uh, uh, possible to scale too quickly? For sure. Um, you got to be careful, right? Uh, uh, I've always lived by, look, success can kill. If you grow too quickly, you're not going to be prepared as well, especially if you want saving, going back to the original question, okay? Um, if you're not prepared, you, you, you're going to run into problems. And so what happens is sometimes we, we want to get more leads in sales. We want to pick up more leads. But what ends up happening is that you haven't figured out the foundation of fulfilling those leads. And so be very careful from that perspective of always wanting more leads. Getting leads is not actually that tough. I can teach you how to get a ton of leads, but it's what you're going to do with those leads. And so scaling, the biggest mistake that I kind of made personally was I didn't scale. So I'm going to get pulled by both ends here. I didn't scale as quickly as I should have. And, and I knew that because I was running into problems where I was bringing in leads and I wasn't able to fulfill them. I should have grew even quicker than I have because I could have picked up on more people. All, all you really need, in my opinion, to scale is people because you can get a lot more done. Do you believe in charging for education and consulting? You provide a lot of free education with your real estate business, but do you ever see that change? No. Do, I mean, like, do you believe in uh, charging? For yeah, education? for sure, man. I mean, each to your own, first and foremost. Like, I don't, I don't like think it's a negative thing if you try to monetize is kind of the word that people throw out there. Monetize uh, uh, your your experience, your education, your value, like whatever, like whatever floats your boat. Mm -hmm. um, for me, what I found in real estate is that um, the more that I just gave it all away for free, I always, re I always uh, reference the book behind me, obviously all the content. I think if you go back into my content, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, maybe, maybe like 3% of the time I've ever said, call me, go here. Like there's really no call to action. At the start is because I just, again, like I didn't even know to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I just said, I, 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 if I'm just myself, I'm not one to say like, like, go call me. Like, here, take the information, use your cousin Charlie, 
Um, or if you feel like I'm the guy that you want to work with and my team is the team that you want to work with, awesome, come work with us. But um, I just found it worked well for me. The less that I, I did call to actions and the less that I tried to monetize my real estate education, I actually got more clients, which then got me more deals, which made me more money. And so I was like, I'm not screwing with this. Mm -hmm. It's working. If it's not broke, why would you try to fix it? Now, it, will there come a time that I might try to monetize um, or, or, or sell a book and a course? Yeah, look, I hope that you're getting a lot of value watching this. It's free. I don't charge for any of this. I'm telling you to call in. I'm telling you to call in if you're working with a client right now and I can guarantee you, I might not have the exact answer that you're looking for, but I can guarantee you, I will bring you some value in the exact deal that you're working in. If you're selling a cup, a paper, a phone, a mic, real estate, a boat, mortgage or insurance, because for me, it's all the same. It's been 26 years. There's very rare times you're going to stump me when it comes to sales. I'm giving away for free. Now, six months from now, six years from now, 14 years from now, might I put a course together? Might I put a book together? Maybe. And I hope because of all the value I gave, like, and continuously and, and, and consistently, if I ask for a $20 book spend of yours, you'll freely do that. How do I become a more effective and assertive negotiator? You need to be more prepared. Um, what's helped me most, I mean, I, I mean, I'm in negotiations all day long and sometimes it's not from the sales industry, man, I was negotiating today with my five year old, and my seven year old about putting on their clothes to go to school. Wow. Are they amazing negotiators because they just don't take no for an answer and it's consistent. you got to figure out different ways. So you got to practice when I say be prepared, try to do as like, try to stack the cards in your favor as much as you can, depending on who you're going to be speaking with. So if you're negotiating, um, whatever deal you're negotiating, try to find out as much as you possibly can about the other party. What are they looking for? I ask a lot of questions when I go into negotiations, what would Mr. And Mrs. Client, Mr. And Mrs. Business Partner, whatever it is, what, what would have to happen for you to leave this conversation today and, and, and in a, in a positive manner throws them off a little bit because they came to probably to beat me up, beat me up from a, try to get a better price, try to get my commission lower, um, uh, try to get more out of the deal. Most people are trying to get more. I'm just trying to, I'm actually trying to give more. I don't mind taking a little bit less. I'm okay. Cause I want to do more deals. I want to put together more partnerships. And so just by asking the question, Hey, like what would have to happen for you to leave this conversation in a positive manner or for you to feel like you got more out of this deal, let them put their cards on the table.